All right, today I'm going to show how I take a PDF invoice that a customer asked me to do to convert it into a row in their CRM. We're gonna take it from a Google Drive. We're gonna use a third party service and then OpenAI to take the data out of that PDF, even an image that's in there and turn it into the structured data we need for the CRM. All right, this is a sponsored video by Zapier. And you might be thinking, this guy does N8N videos as you see from the long list over here. But the customer brought this zap to me and said, I need to do this. So let's dig into how I'm gonna make this work. And Zapier, I'm new to it, but it was easy to get going, partly because it's friendlier. I don't know why it registers more friendly with people for that person, it was like, yeah, I can do this, but I hand them other tools like N8N and they're like intimidated. Who knows? But this is a lot friendlier to use. And their chat integration really was like, hey, I threw it in there and it set up all the steps. And then as I worked through my steps and had problems, it worked through those as well. So we're gonna take this PDF and we're gonna pass it through the system. Now, we're gonna want the invoice number we're gonna want the third page sent date and time. But this is an image. And so one of the things with OCR that doesn't work is images and PDFs can be bizarre. They might look like text, but they could be images. This happens a lot. So if we were to throw this into a typical OCR system or script, you wouldn't get that particular data there. You just wouldn't because that is technically an image. And I've had this go happen with projects quite a bit, not all the time, but like 50% of the time. You gotta be careful with PDFs. And when you're taking PDFs and putting them into your RAG system, you don't wanna depend on OCR because there might be data just lost like charts and tables. You really want the AI to understand and explain. So this is a great pattern for a lot of use cases when it comes to taking content and turning it into data. So let's walk through that, okay? And we'll take each step and we'll talk about each one and we'll talk about the third party services and why I'm doing it that way. All right, so let's work down Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever it is, it's a trigger. It's something that starts all of this. So it could be email, it could be HubSpot, it could be Google Drive. You just wanna to get to a place where potentially one trigger then sends it somewhere else in the human doesn't have to do the boring job of moving files around and naming folders and stuff. Just hopefully these systems all just connect. So when a file goes in here, we aren't gonna look in the subfolders. The subfolder completed is the one I want to put the file in when I'm done, okay? So when a file goes into that folder, things will start to happen. So I'm gonna put a file in there now so as we're doing this, we can walk through it. So I'm gonna take this one that I just showed you and just drop it in there. All right, Google Drive, Zaps folder, subfolders false, and that's it. Now the trick or the key here is to do testing. And if I find a new record, it isn't always a new record. It could be that same record over and over again. So in this case, it's probably new because I just put it there. But if I ran it again, you'd see an E. It's just how it works. So you're better off grabbing the late, latest one so you have the latest record, okay? And so now we're gonna go to this guy and we're gonna just say, okay, we're doing another Google Drive step we're gonna add file sharing permissions. And we're just doing this for a moment. We're saying the next steps down can use this path I'm gonna give it. So this was blank, of course, chat built it for me. And then I could just do a forward slash. That's what they call that slash. And now I can look in here to look at my past drive item and grab the link in there. So I think they want me to use one of these. When I say they, it's Google Drive, so this thumbnail. We want the file share. <laughs> so let's go find that one. So let's just say download URL. Let's just do that. And we'll see what happens. Let's do a test. And then we're gonna not skip a test. We're gonna test the step or retest it. Not found. Let's try the other one. Oh, file ID, it says it right there. Thank you. So now we're gonna test the step again. So it moved over the button, we're here. Now, the point here is this is a shareable link that anybody could see. So if I open up anonymous window, that I'm not logged in at, we see that, I can see that. And we don't want that forever. It's gonna be for like 30 seconds. Now, when we continue from here, we go to PDF Co. And I chose PDF Co because I'm used to their service. And I'm gonna give them the path, the shareable path, 
and I'm gonna, they're gonna turn it into a PNG because I think if I put the PDF AI to look at, it just doesn't pull it off as easily as PNG. I haven't had much luck there. Now, when we give this as a PNG, I don't wanna give it all the pages. So that's another thing I wanna touch on here. These PDF invoices could have five pages, eight pages, two pages, whatever. All I ever want is the first page and the last page because all the middle stuff could overwhelm the AI and I just don't need data from it. So one little touch I did there was do this weird format that AI helped me with that reading their docs, I gave it and just said, do this. And I ran it and it took a while. I had to run it a few times, ask AI, ask a chat, like, why is this not working? Eventually it worked, okay? So at this point, when I run this test, the service is gonna take that URL we gave it that it can access because we made it shareable and it's gonna turn it into two pages of PNGs. PNGs are just image files, okay? So let's give this one a moment. So if we look here for a moment on the data out, not the data in, we have a bunch of URLs. So if I was to open up this URL in a new anonymous browser again, just to prove it's not my credentials, we have some information, right? So here is one of the pages. Here is another page. Let's go look at that, okay? So now what we wanna do is start putting those pages into the, to the AI to get the data we need. So when you look at this one, I have a setup where I put in my credentials and I use the analyze image action. And then I go to configure it. Now this is something to remember. Prompting is key. Typically there's a couple of reasons why things won't work for you when it comes to AI and partly it's prompting. The other one is what we call temperature and I'll show that in a moment. But take a moment to do a good prompt. Hit the test, run it again, Go open up another chat window in another AI and ask it, why did this not work? Get your prompt better, right? So now, as I use the ChatGPT OpenAI image analysis, we have to send it the prompt, as I said a moment ago. So take your time, run the test over and over again, and get to a place where it works. It will work. And in this case, I'm going to do a forward slash, and I'm going to go grab the first page. So it would be this one here. And I know that because I went back to this guy and I looked at the first page of the results in its test output. So it's really that easy. Just go open that in a new tab and you'll see it, okay? And I'll go over to test. Oh, and I increased the max tokens here to 16.384. Then I go over to test and I retest the step. So we have our data in, and then we have our data out. So it says 67890. Oh. So if we look, up here, we see 67890, oh, good, okay? Now, you could do this all in one, try it. It's not a bad idea, it's just I wanted to get accuracy, and we'll talk about accuracy in a moment as well. So here we are, we do another one just like this. We give it a different page, we give it a different prompt, and we give it some different goals here. Again, this is a funny format. AI will help you build this up. It's just what we call JSON, it's just structured. I don't even know if it's that important here. We'll look in a moment in the last, step and you'll see what I'm talking about. So now if I click step, we can go here and retest this step. Now I'll run it again. And this prompt was looking for the date from the last page. So we get to that image moment. So now we go back to here to preview our invoice and we see the data there. Again, this is an image. Like I can't just go get this text out of here as I showed you a moment ago in that OCR output. Like I was saying up here, it just doesn't show there. It just can't. This is just getting text. Okay. So now we, and notice I name these. Take a moment to rename your steps because that will pay off later on when you're trying to just remember where you are in the flow of things. Okay. So now we want one more thing out from this. There's a prompt. There's a customer name on the footer of these invoices. And I just want to grab that. Now we're going to send this to our database. I'll show that in a moment. But at this point, we pass in the first page. I think all the pages have the footer, so it doesn't matter. And then we just run our tests and now we get everything. Okay. So here I said, hey, I want to use this step. I'm going to extract structured data action. Okay. We call it JSON. It's structured data. It's a way of saying, this is the key. This is the value. This is the, the key. <laughs> this is the thing, customer name. This is the value, Bob's. This is the key invoice underscore ID. This is the value one, two, three, four, five. Okay. 
And how I did that was I just threw in all the data from our previous work. So if we do forward slash and we look, here's our get data from date from last page. And we have our results right here. And I just put that into here and boom, we have it. So now we have all three results right here. I'm using 4.0 Mini. You could use different models and play around till you get one that's fast, affordable, and consistent. And then I give it a goal here of outputting JSON. So sent date, invoice date, customer name, title. I add some values here as well, just to double up. I don't, I, I would have to go around and try a few different formats, but this one was working for me. Now, this is the most key thing is the temperature. It's going to start off at 0.7 maybe, but you want to get it down to 0.1 or 0.2. And this prevents like it making things up and hallucinating. You want to get to a point where if something's wrong, it's going to stop. And that brings me to my next point. We're going to test this guy and we're going to get these results, right? But I could have another AI right under here that is just chatting with ChatGPT. And I could say, hey, can you review this and see if it's correct or not? So I can get to a point where it's checking itself and it could even error out and send me an email saying, hey, this isn't working, something's wrong and I can go fix it. So here's our CRM. It's a database. It could be anything really, HubSpot, whatever. And I connect to it. Then I say, okay, this is my CRM. Go connect to that and let's go add the data. So now it gave me a bunch of fields to choose. And now we just do forward slash and we go grab the data from those previous fields. So we get convert to JSON is the only one we want here. And we want to say, here's my data. So here's my invoice ID. Here's my client name. Here's my sent date. Like these are consistent keys that we can hold on to that then get the value out of. And that's really important because structured data is where we can be 100% consistent and then hand that over to the next step, which is a database. So at this point, let's go run this. So we got a line here. We can delete that and we can go back to there. And now if we run this guy, retest that step, we should get the same thing. We've now put this into our database with proper relationships and everything that relates back to our customers with the information we needed with an invoice ID, which shouldn't have a comma, but I'll fix that later. All right. And then we finally just have Google Drive delete the file or actually move the file to our completed folder. So by the time we're done, that is gone. And that particular file will end up in here and the next file will trigger and so forth. If 10 files go in there, it'll trigger 10 times, move them out of the way because it's not going to go into that folder. All right, I hope that shows you how easy it is to take data from one place and move it to another, to reshape it, even handwritten notes. You can have your staff taking photos of handwritten paperwork from one situation on site and get it into the database just like that. There's a lot that can happen here and a lot of customers are looking for this flow. And thanks again for the sponsor Zapier. Like I said before, I only do videos for sponsors that I would use and my customers use. And so this is a customer brought this to me and to have them also sponsored is just perfect for me. So thanks again and use the link below. It's an affiliate link. So that will help support the channel. Subscribe, share, comment, ask questions, share a business problem you have, and I'll show you how I would solve it. All right. Thank you very much.